Greetings, everyone. My name is Rui Minglu. I'm here to share our work on detecting fail slow failures in large scale cloud storage systems at Alibaba. This is a joint work of researchers from Shanghai Jiao Tong University and Xiamen University in cooperation with Alibaba Group. Data centers are critical components of our digital infrastructure. It's essential that they remain stable and reliable at all times. Unfortunately, failures can and do occur in various forms such as fail slow and fail stop. In this study, we focus on detecting fail slow failures for storage devices. A fail slow component is one that is still functioning but with lower than expected performance. This can be problematic as it can go unnoticed for a long period of time, leading to reduced efficiency, increased downtime, and even data loss. The fail slow failure is often overlooked. According to a recent study, fail slow failures can cause severe performance degradation and are already as frequent as fail stop incidents. Even worse, it can often behave like performance variations, posing a significant and lasting impact on the IO performance in the wild. Here is the tail latency of a storage node with one known fail slow drive. As we can see, the node level tail latency returns to normal after the fail slow drive was taken down for manual inspections. In practice, most fail slow failures are already hidden in the storage systems, silently contributing to high tail latencies while remaining undiscovered for a long period of time. Such silent performance degradation motivates us to detect fail slow failures in large scale storage systems. However, fail slow failures are hard to detect. There's no ground truth in identifying fail slow. Unlike fail stall failures where the oracle is clear, there are seldom ways to define fail slow. For example, onsite engineers are often confused and ask how slow is a drive to be considered fail slow? And the answers may vary across different people. More importantly, it is not always the fail slow failures that cause performance degradation. A temporary heavy workload or one shot high GC time could also introduce abnormally high latency. Previous studies on fail slow detection are intrusive and constrained. Intrusive means they need to alter the source code of the running instances. However, large service providers like cloud vendors are prohibited to touch users' code. Coarse grain means they can only achieve node level detection rather than device level. Therefore, they still require non trivial manual efforts to locate the exact fail slow component, let alone root cause reasoning. In our work, we first share our years of experiences in fail slow detection at Alibaba. We then introduce Perseus, our non intrusive, fine grained, general, and accurate fail slow detection framework. Lastly, we extensively analyzed the root causes of the detective fail slow drives. Next, I will introduce our dataset. We analyzed and detected fail slow failures in around 248,000 drives. The drive fleet covers various drive specifications, serving a total of nine cloud services. We collect device level performance logs like the latency and throughput time series. Based on the raw dataset, we also built and released a test benchmark for fail slow detection. The test dataset has now been made publicly available for open access. Over the years, we have explored multiple solutions to fail slow detection. Next, I will introduce these previously failed attempts, which further lead to the design of Perseus. Our first attempt is the threshold filtering approach. Since fail slow drives usually have outstandingly high latency, we start by checking the latency time series in one storage node from time T0 to T1. Every gray line corresponds to the latency variations of every drive in this node. As we can see in this figure, there are two latency spikes that may be an artifact of fail slow. To detect these two spikes, a naive approach is to set hard limits on the latency. 
In this case, any latency entries above this threshold are deemed as slow entries. With the hard threshold, we can easily filter out the latency spikes and capture the potentially slow drive. However, are these two latency spikes really the artifacts of failed slow failures? If we cross-validate with the throughput time series, we can see there are two throughput spikes occurring during the exact same time windows. Obviously, it is the temporal workload burst that caused these two spots of latency variations rather than fail slow failures. Moreover, things will get more interesting when we check the latency variations later in time. As we can see, a much higher latency spike occurs later in time, followed by another two spikes. And the previous threshold we set in red dashed line can still capture all spikes at once. However, since some latency spikes are just normal variations, a higher threshold above those small spikes may work better in capturing fail slow, or an even higher one that best fits with the current highest spike, or ultimately a hard threshold that only focuses on extremely slow events. However, setting up these thresholds is empirical and inaccurate in practice. And thus, we are trapped in a dilemma. On one hand, setting a relaxed threshold like the red one can easily mislabel normal performance variations as fail slow false positives. On the other hand, a strict one like the purple or the blue one could leave many fail slow cases undiscovered. Our further experiments have shown that latency variation is related to drive models and workloads. Therefore, a unique set of thresholds is hard to adapt to various scenarios with different workloads and drive models. And in the end, we use threshold-based detection as a fail-safe measure like timeout. The problem with the threshold filtering approach is not having an adaptive threshold for detection. In the previous example, we discovered that most peer drives in the same node are healthy with stable latency variations. Therefore, to identify the fail slow, is it possible to compare the suspicious fail slow drive with its normal peers from the same node? A straightforward idea is to let their peers decide. In our setup, drives from the same node are of the same specifications and are receiving similar workload pressure due to load balancing strategies. In this case, they should behave similarly with parallel latency variations. Since fail slow failures are relatively rare and the majority of drives in a node should be normal, we can identify the fail slow drive by comparing the performance between drives from the same node using the peer evaluation approach. Specifically, we place a sliding window along the temporal dimension, incorporating consecutive slow records into slowdown events. However, the peer evaluation approach is still unsatisfactory. Although it can be more accurate than threshold filtering in practice, it requires more empirical parameters to tune, for example, the size of the sliding window. Although it is okay to fine tune the parameters for a few storage clusters, the effort will be prohibitively large if you want to extend peer evaluation to other drive models of different services. For example, it took Ansan engineers several hours to fine tune a mid sized cluster with around 300 nodes. And this set of parameters fails to work on another cluster, even under the same service with the exact same models of drives. Previous attempts provide two key insights. First, workload pressure can significantly affect latency variations. For example, in most cases, latency increases as workload pressure increases. To precisely describe this positive correlation, instead of focusing only on the latency time series, we need to model latency and workload pressure together. Specifically, we model the latency versus throughput distribution. As we can see in this plot, the correlation can be fairly simple. We can use a linear regression model to describe such a relationship. In other words, we use the regression model to define a statistically normal drive 
and subsequently use its upper bound as the adaptive threshold for various environments. Second, unlike failed stop failures, there are no clear criteria for detecting failed slope drives. Instead of relying on the framework to output the binary results, the detection tool should describe the likelihood of a drive to be failed slope. With sufficient accuracy, onsite engineers can then focus on the most severe ones. While this may still leave some failed slope drives undiscovered, it is acceptable as they behave like normal performance variations. Next, I will introduce the design of Perseus, which utilizes a light regression model and scoring mechanisms to detect failed slope failures. Throughout this part, we use the latency versus throughput distribution within one storage node with one known failed slope drive as an example to illustrate the detection process. By taking a glance at the figure, there are obviously two groups of LVT distributions, one above in red and another one below in green. In fact, the upper red group is from the failed slow drive, while the lower green group is from its normal peers from the same node. So how can we identify the failed slow drive with such a deviating distribution? Recall that we seek to use regression models to define a statistically normal drive and subsequently use its upper bound as the adaptive threshold. Therefore, before applying regression models, the first step is to root out the noisy samples using outlier detection algorithms. The remaining samples, which are from the lower green group, are from the distribution of normal drives in this node. Then we fit a polynomial regression model and obtain its prediction upper bound in a green line as an adaptive threshold over latency. Then we put this regression model back into our raw data to identify the fail slow entries. Specifically, any entries above the green line are deemed as slow entries, and any entries below the line are normal. Now, with such a statistically significant and adaptive threshold at hand, we identify the fail slow event by revisiting the temporal dimension. We use a sliding window to identify fail slow events similar to the peer evaluation approach. Here, we focus on two aspects of the fail slow events, namely slowdown duration and slowdown degree. If a drive frequently has fail slow events with a long duration and high slowdown ratio, then it is very likely to be a fail slow drive. To benchmark and quantify the slow slowness of drives, we first convert the per drive daily slowdown duration and degree into risk levels. Then we assign different weights to the risk levels and calculate the risk scores. The higher the risk score, the more likely and more severe a drive is fail slow. Eventually, outside engineers can prioritize and manually inspect drives with the highest risk scores in the first place. Now, I will briefly introduce our evaluations and the conclusion. One significant challenge of testing fail slow detection frameworks is the lack of a benchmark. Existing fail slow datasets only record the high level administrative information of fail slow incidents and thus cannot be used for evaluation. Therefore, we built and released a large scale fail slow detection benchmark based on verified fail slow drives and production level traces. Based on the test benchmark, we have extensively evaluated Perseus against our previous attempts. Please refer to our paper for more details. Moreover, we further analyzed the root causes of the 315 fail slow drives in the test benchmark. The majority of the root causes are software-induced resource contentions. For example, in one cluster, the host will sign an individual thread to manage the I.O. of each disk. However, the ill-implemented scheduler may incorrectly assign one thread to host multiple HDDs. As a result, these HDDs suffer from fail-slow failures from resource contentions. 
We have also discovered other root causes, including bad capacitors and bad sectors for hardware defects and temperature power throttling as environmental factors. In this paper, we first share our unsuccessful attempts in fail slow detection for large scale storage systems. We then introduced the design of Perseus, which utilizes classic machine learning techniques and scoring mechanisms to achieve non-intrusive, accurate, fine-grained, and general fail slow detection. We believe the design methodology of Perseus can be adaptable to other problem domains, and we wish to inspire researchers in this line of work by releasing our test benchmark. Thanks for listening. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact us via the email at the bottom.